With holiday season upon us, let's look at Grafana and InfluxDB along with Telegraph one last time. So for this setup today, we're going to use a Linux Mint uh, version 19. And we're going to go ahead and install the InfluxDB client and the InfluxDB version just from the general repository. We're not going to go ahead and add anything special here. Now, the purpose of this exercise is that we're going to show you how to quickly collect counters using InfluxDB and Telegraph and then uh, visualize that using um, Grafana. So we're going to go ahead and do all the steps, first of all, on the Linux machine. So the first one is that we're going to install Influx, and then we're going to use the Influx client to create a new database which will store all of our collected uh, information and metrics from our Windows machine that we are going to look at later. So we're just going to connect to our Influx DB and create a brand new database for this usage. Now, as you can see, we only have the internal DB, so we can go ahead and create our demo DB. That is, if I spell it correctly, it does come with an E with create. Now, next up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a retention policy. Now, retention policies can be set with hours, days, weeks, um, potentially even years. So in this case, it's a simple enough process. I'm going to create a retention policy called Fortnite, which quite obviously will have to be set on our previously mentioned demo database. And it's going to have a retention period of two weeks. Now, this in some cases is too short for some of you, too long for others. It's entirely down to you how you configure it. And again, um, it does help if I leave the space in the, correct, in the syntax. So once that's done, we're gonna exit out of the client and proceed to configure the next steps, which in this case is to move over to Grafana, or in this case, first of all, we need to install Grafana. Now, there isn't really a good repository available per se, so it's best to actually head over to the Grafana website itself and grab the latest version. Now, usually um, this is, I think the current release is something like 6. So for me, that means just simply installing uh, 6.2, I think it is the current version. I will see in a second. And from there, we can go ahead and configure Grafana dashboards. Now, Grafana dashboards are very straightforward and very easy. So we'll just uh, take our existing configuration text here. We'll paste it into the terminal, and that downloads the 6.5. It's, it's moved on a few versions since I used it last. And we just run the configuration. Now, there are two parts post-installation or configuration here. You can run the setup directly and go ahead and just configure it or you can configure the services and connect to it. Now what I've done is I've gone to the default port which is 3000. Um, as you can see it isn't actually started after the configuration install so we can manually start it but you also do see there are a couple of lines above about starting the daemon process and enabling it so it will automatically start with your machine I do recommend doing that if you're doing anything other than just playing for five minutes anyway now having manually started the process I can go in the password as usual as login admin admin and you then get prompted to change the password which obviously I do recommend you all change the password and we're going to create now a data source, and in this case, that's the influx DB and the local influx DB. So it's a straightforward process. We select influx DB as a data source. We can configure it. We have a couple of options in terms of how we connect to it as well. Um, under normal circumstances, I would suggest that you configure all of the security options. I I uh, have mixed feelings about using usernames and passwords. I generally think it's a bad idea. Um, I would suggest preferably use certificate-based authentication or a any other authentication, to be perfectly honest, rather than sending username and password over um, the simple connection, if you will. That said, um, 
it's only monitoring data so it's not super sensitive or secure and again it does also help if I put in the correct port number so we're just going to change that 906 test again there we go and we have entered our database we've entered the local URL of our influx DB and we can go ahead now our next step is to set up a well, basically a dashboard. Now we could manually configure one or we can go over to Grafana and just grab one. Grafana has this lovely thing where you can put in the number of the dashboard and then you can just load it. So rather than creating a dashboard completely from scratch, you can just take one from their website and then configure the data source and load it, like so. Now, I don't recommend this in all circumstances, however it is a great place as a starting point for all our dashboards rather than needing to configure them from scratch. So we now have a dashboard and we have an InfluxDB, but we have zero data. So we pop over to our Windows machine and we're going to need this to basically act as our data source. So first of all, uh, let's open up a terminal, uh, we're going to do a choco install, and we're going to tell it that, hey, install the Telegraph package. Now, most of you probably have thought about or potentially done some Telegraph installation on Linux. It's actually pretty straightforward on Windows as well, and most of all, you've got one configuration file nine times out of ten because you're looking at Windows performance counters and they are straightforward to be perfectly honest. Now we're not going to dive into the depths of configuring Telegraph in this video because if I did it would easily turn into probably 45 minutes to an hour because there's so much that you could and can do with it. So we're going to keep it a little bit simpler than that. What we're going to do is just go ahead and collect the base counters and look at those initially and the minimum and I emphasize the absolute minimum config that you need to do. So first of all, there is a telegraph.conf file within the program files telegraph directory. So we're going to first of all navigate there because you have the ability to check the telegraph config first of all. So if we do the telegraph um, exe and then we go ahead and we say dash dash config uh, space telegraph.conf space space test that will generate the output or the context in terms of all the information that it would normally send to InfluxDB. So it gives you a good example of what the counters look like and you can confirm first of all that you do have those counters and what the filling values etc are. So we've quickly confirmed yes we have those values they're good good to go. Now the other part of this is it needs to know where to send it. So we have a blank package here. So there's two things we need to fill in. First of all, the URL which we're going to send the data to. And secondly, the database in that URL. Because remember, we have the ability to create multiple databases and store information. So first of all, we're going to unhash the URLs. We're then going to fill in the correct IP address for our particular instance. Again, this could be a fully qualified domain name. It's entirely down to how your environment is set up. IPs are optional. Uh, we're going to change the database option. So in this case, I'm going to switch it over to demo, simply because that's the name of it. And you see there is this line down here that says uh, skip database creation equals false. So we could uncomment it like that, and if the database demo didn't exist, it would actually create it, or at least it would attempt to create it. So depending on permission sets and other things, would prevent. We also have a retention policy option here, so you could potentially configure the retention, but since we've already done that, we're not going to bother. And there's lots of other counters and things in here which we can, could play with, but for the moment, let's not. Now... We've installed it, but we haven't started the service. So from that point of view, just go ahead, uh, look at the fact that the service itself is not started. Um, if we scroll up here a second, we'll see that there is a service called Telegraph after the installation, but it's not started. And in general, it's good to configure the file first, because otherwise you need to restart the service after you've reconfigured the file. So from a logical point of view, first configure it, then start. And if you're doing any kind of automation, think about it that way.
Now if we pop over to our Linux machine, in this case back to our Mint one that we configured earlier, we can see after a couple of minutes we do have data in there. Now the dashboard is missing a couple of counters and there's nothing wrong with the dashboard per se but just that the way that it's configured is expecting certain counter information to exist which in my collection doesn't and it's an easy fix I can go and just change the collection but that's entirely down to you and honestly it's better than starting a fresh dashboard.